Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us this afternoon for a training session sponsored by one of our vice president's club members, the American Tower. And by the way, ATC has been a member for nearly 10 years now. So we have a long standing partnership. Thank you so much for accepting to sponsor this training today. I wanted to just remind us the people that don't know about the American Chamber of Commerce, we are a professional association of uh, um, corporate firms. Initially, it was mainly American corporate firms, but now we expanded it to also include multinationals. And we provide a platform for businesses to network, share experience, and coordinate all business efforts. So that is who we are. And my name is Anne Awori. I'm the general manager of Amcham. Happy to have you here today. This afternoon, as you're all aware, we are going to be looking at behavioral competences, the role of thought leadership. You might be asking why, why this topic today? Over the years, thought leadership has become increasingly popular, especially in the asset management industry. And it's really about a firm uh, positioning itself as an expert in a particular area. There is real need uh, to demonstrate, for firms to demonstrate the competitive advantage that they have because this gives uh, more credibility and influence to the firm. So today we are honored to have two distinguished trainers that are going to take us in, uh, in, in this uh, training session. But before we can uh, go to that, I would like to take us through some house rules, just to remind you that uh, please keep your microphones off as long as you're not speaking, please keep them off so that uh, we can have a seamless training. Would also like to request our trainers today that you keep your videos on so that uh, the participants can connect with you. And then to the participants, we shall have some Q and A at the end. So prepare your questions and uh, who, whom, which trainer you'd like to respond to that question so that at the end, we can uh, respond to all your questions. And of course, we do expect your feedback. You tell us if the topic was relevant or if there are any other topics that you would like us to have trainings in, please do let us know and uh, we shall organize this. Before again, we go into the actual training session, allow me to invite the president of the chamber, Mike Davis, to give his opening remarks. And uh, Mike, after you can straight away hand over to Charles Sinsaba, who will uh, give remarks on behalf of ATC. Mike, over to you. Good afternoon, everybody. How are you today? Um, so first off, oops, let me. First off, thank you for uh, ATC for hosting this and sponsoring this event um, on behavioral um, behavior and thought leadership. Um, let's see, this year's been a, been a crazy year, obviously for everybody, and we're starting to get back to our our normals. Um, and that's great to hear. Um, and then basically we're looking to, from the American Chamber side, look at how do we uh, start doing more trainings regarding activities, regarding uh, emotional intelligence, um, technical skills, uh, soft skills. So from this angle, um, the term thought leader was, was created by Joel Kurtzman in 1994 at a magazine called Strategy and Business. He defined thought leader as someone who's recognized by peers, by customers and industry experts, as someone who deeply understands the business they're in, the needs of the customers in the broader marketplace in which they operate. Uh, ideally, they have 
distinctive original ideas, unique points of view, and new insights into the fields that they represent. Um, the idea was uh, popularized in Australia in 2004 when Matt Church founded a group called Thought Leaders as his training company, which has expanded globally. Mr. Church believes that a thought leader needs to provide meaning, relevance, and engagement. Some of the, some of the famous thought leaders you may recognize are Timothy Ferris, who is an author of a four-hour work week, which is basically focused on how do, you, how do you focus your time in doing the activities that get results, and ideally moving your work week into four hours totally. And he said specifically, a person's success in life can usually be measured by the number of uncomfortable conversations he or she is willing to have. Another thought leader is Tony Robbins, who famously said, if you do what you've always done, you will always get, or what you'll get what you've always gotten. And one of my favorites is Elon Musk, the founder of X.com, which is part of PayPal, SpaceX, Tesla, and many more. He said, and for me personally, this is a deep-seated belief, work like hell. I mean, you have just to put in 80 to 100 hour weeks every week. This improves the odds of success. If other people are putting in a 40 hour work week and you're putting in a hundred hour work week, then even if you're doing the exact same thing, you know that you will achieve in four months what it takes them a year to achieve. And finally, in the immortal words of Yoda, uh, Jedi master, do or do not, there is no try. Um, I'm hopeful that this discussion today will, will teach us all how to be great thought leaders and change the world and, and look at um, ourselves and our leadership styles within our organizations and, and change the way we do business, uh, not only here in Uganda, but globally. So thank you very much. And off to you. Thank you, Mike. I'd like to invite uh, Charles Sinsava from uh, ATC to give his opening remarks. Charles. Uh, thank you, Juan, and uh, thank you, everybody. A very good afternoon to you all. Uh, am I clear? Very clear. Okay, fantastic. A very good afternoon to you all and uh, we welcome you to this session. We are privileged, of course, on behalf of uh, ATC Uganda uh, to be a part of the American Chamber and indeed to host uh, this uh, tonight's you know, training session. Uh, like Mike said, it's, it's been a very, very tricky year. But uh, we are thankful we've been able to sail through, and of course, as a, as a tower call for us, it's been it's been quite an interesting period where we are going through uh, a lot of experiences, trying to understand what people need, what they do not need, and and you know you've all been seeing the demands on you know the, the telecom sector here and there where we operate. It's it's been quite exciting, I must say, but uh, we are happy to be here. Uh, you know, our role is, is really to, our core business is really to build uh, towers uh, and maintain them, uh, the towers on which, uh, you know, uh, connectivity and, and, you know, telecom infrastructure is basically uh, built. But that does not mean that, you know, we just take care of our towers because, you know, they are, biggest, they are the biggest asset that we have. As a matter of fact, uh, a very big asset in our business are the people. And one of our core focus areas are our people. So when you talk about things like you know behavioral competence and uh, you know thought leadership, those are areas we are passionate about. Uh, for us, it is something that sits really at the core of, of what we do. Uh, we are very very mindful uh, of our people, the engineers, uh, the non-technical people. It does not matter as long as you make a contribution to the business. Uh, it, it's really a very, very vital part of, of, of our contribution. You know, uh, Mike shared a bit of, you know, what thought leadership is about. Do we think we fit that bill? I believe so. I believe we've, we've been trendsetters in many areas, both within uh, our group uh, as ATC Uganda, you know, because, you know, there's ATC group, uh, but also outside uh, the ATC uh, business. So no doubt uh, we are thankful for the opportunity. It's not a one size fits all. So we believe that uh, what my colleague is going to be sharing tonight, Mark, is, is, is you know, uh, from his point of view uh, as a leader, but also as, as, as you know, a business. And, and we believe that, uh, you know, one or two things will strike uh, all of us and, you know, we'll be able to learn and uh, enjoy uh, the afternoon. So it, it's a great privilege once again to be a part of the American Chamber. We look forward to an interactive session and uh, we thank you uh, for the opportunity. Over to you, Anne. Thank you so much, Charles, for the opening remarks. 
and uh, we are happy to have ATC as well as uh, our member. So right now, I would like us to straight away go into the training session. And I would like to invite Mark Turiamureva, the head of legal and regulatory affairs of the American Tower, to take your seat, Mark. And uh, Mark basically is uh, also part of the committee of ATC and he is responsible for all matters legal, including legal advisory, leg regulatory compliance, among others. Mark, please take your seat and uh, let us know more about thought leadership. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Anne, uh, for those kind words. Ca can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for, uh, for attending this event. Um, it's, it's an honor to be here. I think we've been part of AMCHAM since um, AMCHAM was set up in Uganda. And uh, would like to thank you for giving us the opportunity to share our experience um, on the topic um, at hand. Um, and I don't know if um, you're going to put up the slides we had shared with you. Let me just make you a co-host so that you can uh, share from your side. Okay. I've done that. You can share now. All right. So um, maybe just to give an overview of what I'll be sharing this afternoon, I'll just be giving a brief um, insight into who we are as a company. Uh, what we do uh, before I delve into today's topic and then share what ATC has done um, in this uh, thought leadership space, especially now in the new normal COVID and the effects or changes it has brought about, uh, not only in the way we do business, but the way we run our lives. So as a company, uh, we are a a subsidiary. Uh, we're part of the ATC group. So ATC is a company that uh, is founded in the US. Um, we are um, listed on the New York Stock Exchange. And we have a couple of regulatory um, aspects that we must adhere to as a listed company in the US. Um, key to them is that we do business ethics um, as a company, we don't engage in things like, um, which is common here, common practice in, in, in the Ugandan market, which you call uh, facilitation payments. To get things moving, uh, we, we can't engage in stuff like that because of being listed on the stock exchange. Uh, we are a Fortune 500 company, and we are proud of that. And we're the world's largest private or independent real estate investment trust. So uh, commonly known as a REIT. So a REIT is simply an avenue in which you own property, uh, mostly to do with long-term property in which you have an interest and in which your interest can be clearly um, explained to your investors. So that, that is really our, our foundation as a company. We are proud to have been listed among the most, the world's most admired companies uh, by Fortune magazine. I think it's this has been in 2021. I think even 2022, we were listed among the companies that people admire to work for. Our primary business is um, communication sites, or what we commonly refer to as towers or masts, which is what most Ugandans call our towers. We like to call them towers, but uh, the lingo that has developed over the years in the Ugandan market is musts. So if you, if you can see the picture in that background, uh, that picture was taken somewhere in uh, in Uganda, in one of the rural areas. And that's, that's, that's a tower that we do. And on that tower is where the likes of um, the MNOs, the customers, the MTNs of this world, Airtel, Africel, um, Smile, all the telecom companies host their infrastructure. So if, if you're to look at um, 
at, the, at this image, what ATC owns is just the, what I'd call the steel structure. So if you look at what's blue, black, uh, sorry, red and white, that is what we own and what's on the ground. Cause what's on the ground is there's a solar panel here. Uh, the generators to provide power to the equipment. What we as a company own is just this lattice structure the, where you see white and red and the what's on the ground in terms of the solar infrastructure. So it's a solar panel. Uh, this is a generator house. And below this panel, there's equipment there for customers. So as ATC, what we own is simply this lattice tower and the, 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 the solar or the power, the power systems on the ground. And then what the other customers own, the MTNs, the Airtels, what you see as these dishes and antennas, that is what they, they, they place on those, on those towers to service you and I, the final consumer. So our business is strictly passive infrastructure. And what, what, what activates this infrastructure is when the, the customers come and place their equipment and activate it so that you can receive signal um, on your phone. Otherwise, without, without this equipment that they place, then you just have uh, a lattice tower, which is, is doing uh, nothing. Um, in terms of our footprint, we are in six continents and uh, we've been able to put up so far 214,000 sites as of end of 2020. We will do a count at the end of this year and this number will go up because we are building sites in all the countries that uh, we are located in. Coming home to Uganda, we commenced our operations in 2012. So we'll be making 10 years next year and we're looking forward to that. It will be a big party um, and we'll definitely invite Amcham uh, to join us for, those, for that celebration. Currently, we are operating over 3,800 towers in the country. Uh, we, in 2019, we acquired a competitor called Eton Towers. And that's what has led to this huge growth in the number of towers we have currently. So prior to our acquisition of Eton, we owned about 1,500 towers. Then when we bought Eton in 2019, they also had about 1,700 towers. And then we've been building towers um, since last year. I'll now delve into um, today's topic, uh, which is thought leadership and behavioral competence and the way ATC uh, we play in this space. Um, so there's, there's, there's a gentleman called John Maxwell. I know many of you have um, listened to his quotes or have read his books. And uh, there's a famous quote he came up with, which uh, speaks to me and to us as an organization. Uh, and and I'll, I'll, I'll read it verbatim. It simply says, a leader is one who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. So in this competence, um, in this, what I'd call a competence aspects, competence aspects, sorry, there are three key, uh, three key elements uh, that go into it. Um, and I think Mike, Mike touched a bit on it when he was uh, opening the session. Um, they talk about expertise. They talk about a leader in your field. Um, they talk about uh, pioneering, a pioneer in your field. So as I was talking about um, what, what, what we feel, or what I feel is critical is the attitude because attitude determines um, the way things are done, the way the way you're able to um, inspire your team, the way you're able to run the business and build trust um, from your those who report to you and from the org um, as a whole, uh, for them to be able to buy into your ideas. So attitude is key, and, and that forms part of the behavioral competence. Um, a few other quotes um, from 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 John John Maxwell before I share um, our ATC story in thought leadership. Um, and I thought these also talk to um, the topic today. So John Maxwell says that uh, we should show up every day, not just in body, uh, but ready to play. And, and that, that just look for my pointer, give me one second, yeah. Uh, but ready to play. And this is a very powerful quote because um, oftentimes you'll, <laughs> you'll go to work or you'll just show up in a meeting, but 
physically you're there, but mentally you're, you're not there. You're not you're not ready to participate um, in 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 what's in what's dis in what's being discussed and share your ideas or share your contribution uh, to the discussion at hand. Um, another one that that is also quite powerful is to keep improving and ask the why. Um, as Ugandans, I think, and maybe it's a, it's an indictment of our education system and society. Uh, I think it's an Africa thing, not Ugandan thing. Actually, we are taught not to not to push back, not to ask, not to challenge. Uh, if the teacher says one plus one is two, you take it at that. Eh? You don't you, you don't go into asking. But how did he come to two? Is there, is there, how did he arrive at this solution? We don't ask that question. Uh, and which, which, is, uh, which, which is quite sad because where the world is heading, it, it, it needs, it does need people who cram and just, up, you need to be able to apply yourself and apply the knowledge you've got to the, a particular set of uh, circumstances. So this, this, this is something that, um, that I think as, 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 as a market or as a people we are lacking. But it is something that we, we, we really need to strive towards. Um, the other is to follow through with excellence uh, and not let the ball drop. The other is to accomplish more than expected, go the extra mile. Um, of course, for us in a business, uh, in this corporate world that we're in, uh, you'll find that most of, a lot of the times people stick to the script. Uh, my JD, my job description is this. Uh, anything outside this, I'm not going to do. And that all goes about attitude. You, do, you don't want to go the extra mile to um, to go out of your comfort zone or to to put in that next that effort that will take the company to the next level. And the other one, of course, as a leader for us, which is quite critical for me as a leader and the the exco team, is to motivate. How do you keep the business motivated? Uh, we've we've lived through a pandemic for the last two years. It's no longer business as usual. Uh, the new normal has disrupted the way of life. I have not seen some of my colleagues for two years physically. Uh, I see them on these Zoom calls and stuff, but we've not met physically for the last two years. And you're supposed to, to, to lead the business as, as, as a business leader. How do you motivate your staff to keep producing um, to the levels they were, they were punching at pre-COVID? So these are, these are some of the things that these quotes from... Uh, from John Maxwell inspire in us, inspire in me as a leader, and to see how we, as ATC, how do we keep the business afloat? How do we not let our current set of circumstances disrupt our business model, disrupt the service we are giving to, to, to clients? Uh, we are a critical player in the telecom space because all the companies in, in the telecom space, all the telecom operators use our equipment. So if ATC drops the ball, if ATC wallows um, in this whole COVID, COVID has changed the way we work, we can't go to the office. COVID, we don't have, we can't sign documents physically anymore. We can't have meetings, but yet you're expected to, to keep the network running. Remember I told, I told you, uh, you should be able to make calls 24 hours a day. So, uh, and, and that, that, that's, that's a commitment we give to our customers. So how do we then, um, transition ourselves to play in the new normal. And that's what brings me to our story as a company. What we have been able to do in this thought leadership space. So primarily, we are a technology, yes, I know we talk about tele, we're a telecommunications infrastructure provider, but we're a, we're a technology company because a lot of what we do is based on technology. COVID has um, has disrupted um, our way of work. I personally have not been to my office in the last two years. I work from home now full time, same as Charles. Charles joined the organization last year and I had to onboard him. I had to onboard him on uh, Microsoft Teams. Uh, gone are the days where you'd have this deliberate onboarding uh, session for new staff. Uh, they come to your office, you tell them this, this is who we are, you, go, you take them around the, build, the, the, the office space, shake hands, please meet Charles, Charles has joined the company. We've had to rethink the way we work as a company. Um, we were fortunate um, that being part of this 
a multinational company. We did see it coming. Um, so COVID um, started, of course, it started, in, it started in, in China, then went to the US sometime. Yeah, later found it was it's with the US and the US saw the warning signs and informed us early enough. So before the president announced the lockdown, the first lockdown um, in March last year, we had, di we had done dry runs. Uh, what I mean by dry runs, we had anticipated a situation where we would not be able to be in the office and we had started prepping ourselves. We had uh, sent staff home and told everybody to work from home even before the lockdown was announced just to test our systems and see where, where are the challenges? If we're to work from home full time, what challenges are we going to face? So we, of course, the, the, main, the, main, the main problem we face in the city and, and maybe countrywide is internet. Internet, um, internet was not, most internet companies designed it for to be, to be used in, uh, in the city, in, in the city center and not in the suburbs. So that's why currently, I mean, I'm on the call now, but I, I dropped off because the network was not designed to support people working from home. So we had to now think and speak to the mobile network companies and say, guys, this, this thing is on the horizon. It's coming. Other, company, other companies might have not seen it, but we had seen it, we had been informed. There's no country in the world that would be spared from this. It's coming. We had to sit with them and say, look, we have 120 staff. All these 120 staff are going to work from, from home full time. How do we craft solutions for them? to work from home. Then you sit with your IT team and say, which internet provider has the best speeds? You, zero, you, zero, you, you, you identify fine. Who is the second best? You get that one as well. So we, you, we signed both of them up at the same time and say, so Mark, you'll work from home. Your primary internet provider will be, let's say MTN. Your secondary, your secondary internet provider will be, let's say Africa. So we made sure that all our staff have at least two internet connections uh, to work from home because of reliability issues. Then we also said, fine, we have invested in an office. We have comfortable furniture, we have desks, we have desktop screens. Now, if someone is working from home, will they be working in a sofa set? Will they be working on their beds? Will they be working on the dining table? Do the chairs that they'll be sitting on for eight hours, do they support the kind of work that they're going to be doing. So we have to think again and say, no, look, if we want our staff to be comfortable, we're going to have to take the office to their homes. So if you can, my video is on. So if you can see uh, the chair behind, so this is my office seat. It was brought to my house. Um, the desk, the desk that I use at home, this is my office desk, the desktop screen that's here. So we, we, we deliberately made it take, take the office to the homes of your of your of your of, of staff so that they don't feel like as a business we are constraining them someone shouldn't have to work to work in a sofa for eight hours a day because it's not comfortable uh, there are chairs that were designed for this we also thought about electricity of course when you're in the office you're in a serviced office landlords provide power backup systems but in our homes not many have these power backup systems, not many have solar, not many have uh, inverters, not many have generators. So as a business, we again thought and said, if we are to run this network from home to the same service level that we're accustomed to in the office, then we also must provide power backup systems to staff. So as a business, we also invested in this and sent power backups to staff homes. So that if power goes off, at least between the core hours of eight to five, someone is still able to work and make sure that uh, we don't have outages um, on the network systems for the customers that we operate. Then the other thing, of course, now this, this one was really critical for us because, I mean, we've grown up or we've worked in offices. Uh, it's easy to supervise people when it's just you're on the same floor, you just open a door, call them in for a meeting, discuss issues, brainstorm, close out ideas. Now, this was a critical one for us because we thought and said, how are we going to maintain the same level of productivity of staff? If someone is, if some, if someone is working from home, you don't know if, if it's nine o'clock, they're still in bed. 
if it's uh, they're working for, maybe they're running their own side business, you can't know uh, because you are used to seeing them in the, in the office eight to five, but now you're trusting people uh, to work from home under no supervision at all. So we didn't get it right the first time. I will not say we got it right the first time. The, the, first, the first maybe month was a bit of touch and go. Uh, refining our systems, seeing what works, what does not work. But then we finally zeroed in on a system that would provide us as, as business leaders some level of comfort that staff are actually working and, and they're being paid to work and they're delivering on what they're supposed to deliver. So we made it a requirement for all, all, all our calls now, uh, Microsoft team calls, uh, we have them on video. So at least for that one hour, you're able to interact with your staff, have your appraisal meetings, at least you're seeing someone in the face, you're able to discuss challenges, you're able to give feedback as opposed to what it was before when I just pick up the phone and call. So we had to now transition and say, you must, you must give someone some kind of flexibility. We'll, we'll, not, we'll not, as a business, we'll not be on your case full time, what are you doing, where are you now? You give people that kind of that leeway of maturity as long as they're delivering will not be in their in their space but we will require them at least one hour every two days to have a catch-up call with their with their line manager with their supervisor uh, just to see what's going on and what's 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 working what's not working um something else we have done and and which we are proud of as a business as part of this thought leadership journey we as as a country mental health was has, has never been at the forefront and it's covid that has actually brought out this whole mental um, health awareness campaign because uh, we are, we appreciate that locking someone in the house for now it's been two years almost two years we were working from home um, they, 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 are, they are living in the same home with their with their spouse with their kids um, because of the lockdown and because of the restrictions on gatherings, there was no that that vent or someone to release stress or to release to talk to somebody. It's the same people. You're in a cocoon, you just hold up in your house. So we, we realized that this also would become an issue, and uh, we reached out to some mental health uh, mental health awareness practitioners sometime last year because we also saw this. Uh, one of the effects of this lockdown would be things like depression, um, suicidal thoughts, um, strain on, 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 on your family life because you've, you've now taken your office to the home. So we thought as, as a leadership team and came up with, um, we zeroed in on some, some service providers um, and have onboarded these. Uh, we, we pay them a monthly, a monthly retainer fee. And our staff have access to this to this service day or night. There's a helpline uh, where they can call to vent if they're feeling depressed by their whole arrangement, by work from home, and stuff like that. Something for someone to have a release valve because if someone if someone is bottling things up, then it's only a matter of time before they break down. And if they break down, then they cannot service. Uh, they cannot meet their obligations to the company. Um, Something that was critical for us is with the pandemic, we have been fortunate um, as, as a company, we have not, we have been impacted, our finances have been impacted, uh, but we have not had to take some drastic steps like other companies have to lay off staff or to uh, reduce salaries or to reduce working hours and, and stuff like that. We have been fortunate. Uh, our business has been resilient and, uh, and withstood to, to a large extent, uh, the COVID shocks uh, to our economy. But we also knew that our staff are running, um, they have their personal, personal businesses that they run. So um, just to, to supplement the income that they get from ATC. So with um, that income stream being affected, uh, the fact that um, also maybe one of your spouses I mean, on your spouse, maybe they have not been as fortunate. They've been laid off. Uh, their salary has been reduced. So we've had to also um, get people to talk to, this, to our staff about personal finance management and how to, how to weather the storm 
um, that we're currently in. Um, another big thing we have is a fitness campaign. So you all know that before COVID, we would go to the gym, uh, would give our staff gym membership. But due to COVID, most gyms have been closed and are only just reopening. But we had to think through and say, how do we keep our staff? How do we keep them healthy? How do we keep them fit as a way to fight um, COVID? So we came up with an innovative solution where we have, we have a staff WhatsApp group and we've made it quite competitive. So everybody, there's a target of 5,000 steps per day. And uh, at the end of each day, you post, you post your steps either using from your smart smartwatch or something, but you post your, you post your, your steps on the group. Uh, so it's, it has become competitive. And then the, the person who posts, who has the most steps at the end of each month gets, gets, gets a gift or gets an award, gets a, it's, it's a reward that, that's, uh, that we came up with as, as, as the management team, just to get guys to keep active uh, because we realize you can't go to the gym, but you must keep fit. So this has actually created a lot of uh, fun in the office because people try to compete. Uh, you see someone wants to, if the CEO has posted their steps and they had 7,000 steps that day, then somebody else wants to post maybe 10,000. We know some, some have come up with innovative ways. They tie the the Fitbit around there, those who have like dogs or puppies in the house and that runs around the whole house. And then someone gets like 50,000 steps in a day, but it's just something to, you know, to make guys get out of this hall. It's not only it's work, 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 it, cause it can get quite, quite brutal um, uh, because of the, of the nature of business that we're in. We have also encouraged uh, staff to get vaccinated. We have organized uh, vaccines for staff because we know that um, vaccination is the, is the way out of this pandemic. Um, currently, as I speak today, at least as of yesterday, we've managed to get 90% of our staff vaccinated, uh, at, least, at least with the first dose, and then about uh, 60% are now at the second, have, have received their second dose. Um, so this is something, because we know that um, health at, at the end of the day is the most important. We love the job, we love the money that we earn from the job, but if, if you're not alive, then you can't earn. So this is something we, we are encouraging our staff and facilitating or making sure that our staff can actually access um, these vaccines. The last, or maybe last but not least, something we've also come up with is um, month and fun activities. So what happens is that at the end, at the last Friday of every month, and actually we'll have one tomorrow uh, at the office, um, a, a department comes up with a concept. Uh, so the head of the of department is tasked with coming up with a concept of a fun afternoon. So every, every last Friday of the month, we work half day, then from like two to five, uh, it, it's just fun. So you come up with an activity which will engage the entire organization uh, just something fun. Uh, for example, the Lego team, we did ours uh, in the month of August. And what we did uh, was to come up with uh, a DJ, uh, a comedian and stuff like that, karaoke. And we did it in the office with about 20 people, but we're broadcasting it live so that, you know, you keep that kind of team cohesion, uh, build friendships in the office because it's tough, it's tough. It, it, working from home is not easy. I mean, it, it's not as, when we're in the office, it was very easy to formulate these relationships. But um, with COVID and whole 30% requirement, and of course, all of us are now working from home. As a team, as a management team, we've had to come and think, how do we keep the fun in the office? How do we, how do we remind the staff of the good times we had? and encourage them that these, 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 these fun times are a few months away. Uh, once everybody has gotten vaccinated, we can then meet up again. So these are some of the things we've had to you know, think through as part of our thought leadership journey. And really the critical thing for us was the staff, because um, as Charles said, uh, it, it, it's good having all these company assets that, that we've been fortunate to acquire and expand the business. Uh, but without your people, as a leader, without your people, there's, there's no way you're going as a business. So we've focused a lot on our staff to make them comfortable, uh, to make them able to be to work from home and also try and break the monotony of the whole work from home experience. Um, my last slide is um, 
on the office of the future. And this again speaks to our thought leadership uh, journey as a business. We have spoken to our staff because one of the things of being a thought leader is you must, you must hear what your people are telling you. And our staff are one of our key stakeholders. So this, this ordinarily was the office of pre-COVID uh, where we are in one room, we call it an open, of, open office plan. We, you're seated with your colleagues, you share a desk, you go to the cafeteria, have a meal together. That, that, was, the office, that was the office of the pre-pandemic levels. What we are now seeing and, and what we are now implementing as ATC is an office of the future. We have, uh, as I said, we've spoken to our staff and our staff do not want to go back to the office uh, because they have gotten, gotten accustomed to working from home. Uh, they have realized that they can be productive from home. They can serve the company and at the same time also get to spend time with their spouses, get to spend time with their kids and work flexi hours in terms of uh, I can start, maybe I'll start work at 10 and work up to 10 in the night. Maybe I'll start work at midday and work up to midnight. So it gives them that kind of flexibility. So what we have decided as, as a management team is to adopt the office of the future concept. So as ATC, we will no longer require our staff um, it, will not be, it, will, it will not be mandatory for our staff to come to the office. Like, and that's the majority of our staff. Um, th th there's a small list of about maybe 10 to 12 staff who must be in the office because they operate what we call um, a, a, a monitoring center. So in an office, we have a, a monitoring center where we can um, have a look at all the sites uh, that are I mean, we have a view of all the sites that we have in the country. We can we have a huge screen and we can monitor what's happening on, on all the 3,800 sites in real time. So those staff operate that monitoring center. So you can think of it as a call center. So those staff will be in the office and they're about 10 or 12. But the majority of our staff, our staff count is currently about 100. So the 90% the 90, the 90 or so staff will not be required to come to the office. We are adopting a hybrid model, uh, effective January next year, where you only access the office as a collaborative office. So we've, we've redesigned our office and it is going to be simply a collaborative space. You, you only go to the office if you have a meeting and you want to brainstorm on ideas. Uh, there's a project you're working on, let's say for Airtel, for MTN, and you need to come up with solutions to the challenge you're facing as a team. You book a room, go to the office, brainstorm, two to three hours, two to four hours, get out. So this business of uh, sitting in the office eight to five, uh, waking up early at six o'clock to beat the Nigeria traffic, Chiwatle traffic, those days are least for our staff, uh, normal. And it is something that we pride ourselves in because we've seen that we have been able to deliver for close to two years working from home full-time. And it is something that we see other companies will adopt with time. We believe we are the first company that was, has been able to successfully work from home uh, for, this, for this amount of time without having to go to the office and still meet uh, our targets. So because of that, we're now confident in the new system. Uh, we are rolling out for staff and the staff love it because they'll get time to spend time with their kids. They'll get time to do their own stuff. As long as, as, long as they're delivering, we'll not mind where you're working from, whether you're working in a cafe, whether you're working at the, at the pool side, we don't mind as long as you deliver, you deliver the results. So to us, we see this, this concept is something that will pick up steam uh, among the big corporate companies. Uh, and, and we want to pioneer this and see that uh, we are the thought leader or the, the market leader, at least in this. And so that other companies can learn from us, we can share ideas, we can we can have webinars and explain to them what, what has worked, what is not working. But we feel that this will give our staff leeway um, to do what they want and also to be more productive um, as they serve the, the business interests. So um, thank you so much uh, for your time. Um, I don't know if there are any questions. Um, I'll hand over uh, back to you, Anne. Thank you so much, Mark. Wow, you make some of us look really bad. Oh my goodness, <laughs> ATC, 
<laughs> ATC, no, 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 no. I, it's, it's unbelievable. Wow. Your staff are really well taken care of because um, during yes. these COVID times, indeed, um, mental health is really, really key. And uh, physical fitness, of course, is something that we all strive for so that uh, we can keep healthy. And um, I, I like the, the way he has taken it in and even bringing all your furniture to your working space at home and providing everything that you require to make your work easy. Wow. You're very, it's a very competitive organization. And uh, thank you for sharing the ATC story because I believe it's something that we can all learn from. And I'm sure that uh, you will be getting lots of um, um, consultations, uh, you know, how to, to, to make it better for some of our organizations as well. So thank you so much. That was uh, quite enlightening. Uh, there is a question that has come in from uh, Emily, and she says that fitness, okay, basically she says it's awesome. And then um, she says, thanks for sharing. And what app are you using for the fitness challenge? Ah, okay. So every, every, we're not prescriptive. So people have their, I mean, those who have, um, uh, Android phones. Android has a Samsung steps. Those who have um, those who have uh, iPhones, iPhone also has a way of uh, of recording your steps. There are those who have smartwatches using different kind of technology. So all we require is that you simply post um, a screenshot. You just take a picture of the steps that you've, and then post them on the WhatsApp group, on the staff WhatsApp group. And then we now know that, okay, Mark today did 5,000 steps. Michael, you did 10,000. Charles, you did 20,000. And then at the end of the month, HR will compile and say who has taken the prize home. Then they'll, they'll give them a gift. So that has driven a lot of uh, fitness um, in the office. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And then uh, somebody else would also like to know the service provider that you use for the mental health program. Ah, okay, I can uh, I can uh, share the contact with you after this call. I just need to get the name of the company from our HR team. I'll, I'll, I'll give that to you after this call. Okay, then another thing, does, uh, does this service spill over to the spouse? For example, if I'm the one working with ATC and uh, uh, my spouse is having some challenges, and uh, they would like to consult a mental health practitioner. Would that be on to my spouse? Um, currently it is for staff, but um, we have um, a medical insurance scheme which also covers um, uh, spouses as well, as well as up to four kids. So if, it is, uh, if, if there's a service provider on that, on, on our insurance cover, who also provides uh, uh, mental health, then the spouse can utilize um, that uh, provider. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Now there's uh, another question here. That when should one consider thought leadership and how do you create thought leadership that drives results? Let's repeat that, Anne. When should one consider thought leadership and how do you create thought leadership that drives results? Okay. So uh, again, I'll revert to ATC because that's, that's, that's the, the, the area I play in. So as a market, we are privileged to be a market leader in, in the space we play in. Um, we're the biggest and uh, others say we're monopoly but uh, I, I prefer to call ourselves a dominant player in the market. So when you're a, a leader in the market that you play in, or you're an expert in whatever field you're in, law, business, commerce, then you reach a point where you can say you've, you've achieved it all. And now you start thinking, what else can I do? Uh, for example, at ATC, we had... Uh, been working from office all, all our lives. We had done it all. We had beautiful offices. All our customers were happy. 
And then now this pandemic came and it had to force us to think outside the box to be able to remain relevant. Uh, you'll see that there are businesses in the pandemic that have really taken off um, online, online platforms like uh, social media. People are doing business, right, through social media. And that is now a huge income stream for those, th those who are agile enough to adopt. You pivot, you see the situation and, and adopt. And that's what we had to do as, as a company. So as a leader, Yes, you have people who report to you, you have targets uh, that you must meet for the business, but you, you, you must ask yourself, what can I do differently? What happens if the situation I'm in changes? How do I remain relevant? How do I motivate my team uh, to be able to deliver results? How do I make sure that we're not caught up in this wave um, of change? Because ch ch the only thing that is, that is constant in life is change. There's a lot of change going, round, going around us. You will, if you're in the real estate sector right now, you will re, you'll have realized that people are leaving the city. People are leaving downtown. People are leaving CBD. People are going to the suburbs because people, people are living in the suburbs. Uh, you'll see that a lot of shopping malls are now coming up in the suburbs, Chaliwajala, Najera, Ntinda, uh, Kabalagala, Kansanga. So the business is shifting. So if, if, if your business was strictly for us, we have to be in the, in the center, in the center of town. Then that's not that's not a good approach because as a leader, you must think about, you must study the trends, and see uh, where the market is going, and adapt quickly. And that 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 that's part of being a thought leader. You you quickly adapt, and uh, to remain uh, to remain relevant. That would be my my response to that. Thank you so much, Mark. Uh, I I don't know if you've had the opportunity to read the chats, but uh, there, there's great feedback there for you. Very nice presentation. You are very articulate. Thanks, Mark, for Thank the you. wonderful presentation. And uh, there is another one from Rosalie. Great presentation, Mark. Creative solutions with both business and employees in mind. Fantastic. So there you go. Thank you, ATC. <laughs> so Thank right so now, much. Yeah, Mark, you can take leave. I would like to invite another trainer this afternoon, and that is uh, Miss Regis Namudu. Regis is currently the director of Makerere University Business School, the Leadership Center. She's um, also she initiates, develops, implements and plans programs that promote leadership and governance. Regis is a lecturer in the Department of Leadership and Governance Faculty of Management at MOOBS. And I don't know if uh, you've been also following, but uh, there's a series of other webinars that Regis has been uh, running every Saturday, I think about 7 a.m. with uh, Professor Balunwa on leadership. So she is a great brain this morning to tap from. Miss Regis, please take the seat and uh, let us know more about uh, behavioral change and thought leadership. Thank you very much, Anne. Do you hear me? Yes, yes, we hear you. Yeah, a very good afternoon to you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you, Anne, for the kind introduction. Uh, thank you for inviting me, American Chamber of Commerce, to share the little I know about uh, behavioral competences and the role of thought leadership. Uh, I would like also to thank ATC, the sponsors, and Mark for the very wonderful presentation and uh, to upload them for taking on a strategic and visionary direction uh, as far as managing the challenges of COVID-19 are concerned. And I like it when they are uh, adopting the thought leadership uh, style of managing their businesses and services. Um, I'm here this afternoon uh, to discuss uh, behavioral competences, the role of thought leadership. And um, uh, I'll, I'll start with uh, Uh, my structure of the presentation uh, will be as that. And I would like to, uh, first of all, I must apologize. I cannot upload my video 
it, it is failing me, telling me to go back to the settings. And I'm afraid if I disturb things here, I might fail to make even the presentation. Uh, I apologize for that. And uh, um, my network has been on and off. I wasn't able to listen to uh, Mark all through, but I know he hinted on uh, what I have here, only that maybe the presentation will be uh, a little bit different, wh whereby I will just emphasize some of the things. Uh, I'll start with uh, the, the, the de definition. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure we all know that organizations are established to achieve set goals and that these goals have got numerous tasks and these tasks are usually accomplished by people who are supposed to have different skills, knowledge, abilities. And uh, so they come to work together to make sure that these tasks are done well and that the goals are achieved. So the definition of uh, behavioral competences is uh, uh, the set of defined behaviors, skills, knowledge, and abilities required to perform a task. And uh, BC, the behavioral competences, uh, you will agree with me that they will, they will determine a suitable candidate for a descriptive job. We have, we have seen this as we go for interviews the interviewers usually look up to uh, certain qualities within that candidate, although sometimes they are not listed among the, the requirements. So behavioral competences are very important because as we work in the organizations, uh, we are being prepared to take on bigger roles uh, if we really exhibit those uh, uh, competences. And so, um, Competences are defined in different ways and categorized differently. But for this presentation, I came up with uh, four basic behavioral competences, which I want to discuss with you, though briefly. Uh, one of the categories is individual competences. And these are competences that individuals acquire uh, to enable them perform, like the definition was. And one of them is decision making. Are you able to take decisions that are informed, that are strategic, with a vision? Are you a team player, someone who is able to uh, encourage collaboration, support others? Are you confident? Are you able to show that you have the ability and you are up to the task? Then the issue of knowledge, uh, do you have practical and theory and knowledge on the subject matter. This is usually acquired through experience on, or uh, education. Do you have self-motivation? Uh, we always look for people who have self-motivation, who have that drive to achieve, that drive to take on hard tasks, that, that drive to uh, challenge themselves. So that is a behavioral comp competence, which is under the individual category. Then we also have the interpersonal competences. Uh, these are competences that are really to do with um, interpersonal relationships, uh, the communication skill. Uh, you someone who is able to communicate, uh, who knows what communication is. Do you communicate and people understand? Uh, do you know the purpose where you're communicating? Are you communicating to inform, for decision making, to take action, for noting? All those are uh, skills that are expected for someone who has uh, behavioral competences. Then also teamwork comes again here. Are you able to respect others? Do you welcome um, the different skills other people have? Uh, do you believe in them? Do you know your strengths in the team? Do you know the weaknesses? Do you support others? Do they also support you? Uh, are you okay working in a team? And do you, do you bring up results as you work in the team? Then the issue of being persuasive. Uh, here you must be able to mentor, uh, to inspire people so that you are able to persuade them uh, towards the goal you want to achieve. And of course you must be exemplary and many other things. Pro problem handling. Are you able to, to understand a problem, why it came about and so that you're able to prescribe the right solution to that problem, all those 
competencies are behavioral and they are what we look up to when we are employing people or we want to promote them. Then there is this uh, category of motivational competences. Uh, these are about taking initi initiative. Are you able to take initiative? Uh, or you just um, wait to be told. You know, we want people who take initiative, who get up to the task, they start things, they try them out, they find solutions. And um, of course, they have the task done. Are you able to involve others? That, that, that is a competence. Are you able to consult? Are you able to, are you democratic? Do you hear from others? Do you get their suggestions? Do you take them? Do you advise them? So do you make them own the decisions that you take? Because we know if they own the decisions, they will be able to do things willingly. So do you have that competence? Are you leading by example? Are you walking the talk? That's what we look up to, to you to see whether you have these um, abilities as you work with others. And then the last uh, uh, category I would like to share with you is managerial competences. And this is very key. Uh, are you someone who has a strategic plan, who knows how to plan strategically? Are you basing everything that you do or that you inspire others on the strategic plan? with a vision, mission, goals, objectives, the activities that are going to be uh, carried out in your organizations. Are you following them? Are you, do you know, you have a plan. That competence is very, very important. So you must have it if you want to succeed. And then in this category, we have leadership skill. I underlined it because it is my area of interest. And I also want to mention at this time that all of these other categories fall under leadership. So the leadership is very, very key. And uh, here I also want to emphasize that leadership is different from management. And uh, to say that it is a function of managers, but it is broader than management as we are going to see. So it's, it's, a, it's a, a key competence that uh, we now encourage people to have because managing alone is not enough without, um, without uh, leadership. So I happen to list here some leadership skills that are very important for us if we are to, to be considered among the people who have those really needed behavioral competences. One of them is communication skills. I mentioned earlier that most of the categories that we have uh, talked about uh, under leadership competences, I think we mentioned communication. And for us, uh, when we are teaching leadership, we always say that communication, communication, communication is very, very important. Why? Because you're a leader who has a vision and this vision you're sure you will not achieve it alone without involving others. So you must be able to communicate and not only communicate, but communicate effectively. You don't have to be ambiguous. Uh, conflict management, very key. We all know that conflict is inevitable. It's part of us. And remember, we are working with different people from different backgrounds, different abilities, different personalities. So conflict will always be with us. And uh, the earlier the leader knows how to manage conflict, the better for, for performance. Then another skill that's very important, emotional intelligence. Uh, this is very, very key because um, it helps you to control and manage your emotions and those of others. And as I mentioned earlier, we work with people of different backgrounds, different interests. And so the emotions are always uh, presented differently. So as a leader, you have to know how to manage your emotions as you relate to people and also to understand their emotions. You have to, to study their emotions. When they are angry, how would you treat them? When they are happy, what would you do? When they are stressed, what do you do? So that is a competence that's very important. Then flexibility and adaptability. I think Mark has well explained this. Uh, analytical problem solving skills, uh, team building, 
are you able to work in a team to build a team? It's a process and it's a skill that a leader must have. You must be able to build a team to, to, to make sure that the members in the team know the purpose of a team. They have a common goal. They have synergy. Uh, um, uh, responsibility is uh, collective. And of course, the accountability. You have to build that into a team. That's why I said uh, leadership roles, uh, the competences are really broad. Then you must be customer focused. And this does not mean that you're going to focus on the customers that are coming to your organization. Even the employees are customers and actually they are your first customers whom you must care for. Um, like reliability and commitment, very important. You must show your followers that you're reliable and that you're committed to serve. Because remember we said you have to be also exemplary. So you have to be stress resilient. Yeah, you have to be stress resilient. As a leader, you don't have to show that you're stressed in any way you are supposed to encourage others when they are stressed. So it is a competence that is also very important. Then you have to manage change. Uh, Mark has already talked about that. We must embrace change if we are to survive. And that is a leadership competence, very important. Motivating, coaching, mentoring others, uh, part of the leadership skills. And uh, uh, I also wanted to to mention to you, ladies and gentlemen, that it's not all about the skills. As much as you have the skills, you must know your roles as a leader. It, it also helps to exhibit your capabilities. So you must be able to develop skills and knowledge of others and yours. You must identify talent, coach, train, uh, you create appropriate environment, provide necessary resources. All the things here I've listed are leadership roles, which are very important because you will not be able to successfully apply these skills. You will not be able to manage conflict if you are not able to, uh, to develop talent, to coach, to educate people, to persuade them. If you're not able to do that, you will not be able succeed in, in, in your skills. And more to that, again, the roles. In the literature, you will find that roles, skills, and uh, qualities are interchangeably used, but it is okay because I'm saying you must have a full package. You must have the roles, the, the qualities, and the, um, the skills for you to be an effective leader. So, um, some of the qualities are here. You must be visionary. Uh, uh, Mark told, uh, to, told us about this in his presentation. They are visionary. They are seeing the future and how best they can handle things now to fit in the future. Then you must have empathy. If you do not have empathy, there's no way you're going to be able to have emotional intelligence. There's no way you're going to uh, build a team. There's no way you're going to uh, to manage stress and all that. So you must have empathy. You must um, stand in the shoes of others that you're uh, leading so that you're able to address their challenges more effectively. Then the issue of being trustworthy, very, very important. Uh, if you're trustworthy, of course, your followers will trust you. You must be a titulet and knowledgeable. We all know that knowledge is power. It's very ashamed for your subordinate to come and ask you something that they expect you to know about business and then you say you don't know so you must be knowledgeable if it requires you to go back to school and read please go back and read and be knowledgeable in a subject matter do a lot of research as a leader then you must be patient resilient if uh, you don't have of course um, skills to manage conflict you want to be patient if you don't have skills to, to plan, to communicate, to uh, motivate, uh, you won't be resilient because people catch up in different ways. You must be passionate. Passion is very, very important. If you're not passionate about your, what you're doing, you will never succeed. 
So it is a quality that we must see in you if we want to promote you for, for leadership positions. And then you must be independent. Uh, this means that you really know your vision, you will know where you want to go, and you shouldn't be diverted uh, with your vision. And being democratic, I mentioned earlier, when you involve people in decision-making, they own these decisions and they do things willingly. So it is a competence that we must see in you. You must be flexible and you take responsibility for everything that happens as a leader. Yes, we know you have followers, they are paid salary and all that, but if uh, failure comes, we look at you because we never know whether you didn't facilitate them, you didn't apply empathy, you didn't inspire them. So you always have to know that you take responsibility and it's very important to accept mistakes when they happen as a leader. So that is uh, a brief about um, the behavioral competences. And what I really wanted out to bring out is that those competences really talk about leadership competences. They're about leadership. So now I now come to the thought leadership. Um, I know Mark talked about it. It is basically a type of leadership that is into solving problems from an informed point of view. You know, thought leaders do a lot of research. They ask questions. They are very inquisitive. They want to know the problem, the cause of the problem, and how it can be solved. So um, I came up with uh, these three key thoughts of leaders. Key, three keys of thought leaders. And these are by Terina. Uh, to Terina, thought leaders are those people who do a lot of thinking. They identify problems, uh, challenges, issues, and they try very hard to find appropriate solutions for those problems. So thought leaders, are more like academicians. They're uncomfortable if they don't do research. They must do research all the time. They are looking up for something new, something better. And in the process, they learn. When you do research, when you inquire, when you ask questions, you learn. And when you learn, you're able to acquire information from different walks of life, from different scholars, from different practitioners. And so that means you are able to provide relevant solutions to problems. So those are thought leaders. When they get that information, they lead. And how do they do that? They lead by communicating what they found in the field, what they found in the research. So they are communicating facts, they are communicating practical things, and they are leading in that way. So as they do that, they make sure that you understand what came from the field and that you should apply it the way they have advised you. And remember, they're advising you from an informed point of view. So it will be very easy for them to get followers because they are now trusted, they're experts in the subject matter. And not only experts, they are the gurus because thought leaders read widely. So they're not confined to one specific area. They go, when you can't consult them, they will tell you things. They'll give you solutions for different things in the same industry. So um, that is basically what thought leadership is about. It's about, um, creating change, initiating change from a, an informed point of view. They don't just provide information out of the blue. They go and research, they ask questions, they, um, they are inquisitive, they want to know what the problem is and what real the solution should be. So um, now I want to state their role, the role of thought leadership to behavioral competence. And uh, this is just promotion. These thought leaders promote the behavioral competences. I think as I was explaining, 
you are able to relate to the competences that we talked about in the beginning. Uh, they were all about um, initiating change, uh, managing people, uh, of course, having the task done, but more of having interpersonal relationships, bearing in mind that it is human resource, the human beings that are going to help you to achieve your goals. So uh, their importance and uh, why we need thought leadership is that they have the ability to provide best solutions to challenges uh, because they seek continuous improvement, they initiate change, they are effective communicators. Remember, they, they always find out the truth. They, they, they keep updating their knowledge. And so they sell their idea because they don't want to stop at finding out the, the, the best solutions to challenges, but they want to sell them out so that things uh, get changed and for the better. They motivate others to take initiative, uh, encourage practical perspectives, promote reliability. And because they are gurus in the subject matter, they will be reliable. And people want to listen to them. They want. Uh, I heard Max say that Maxwell inspires him. Maxwell is, to me, he's one of the thought leaders that we know we have in this world. He does a lot of research and uh, he provides information and uh, different solutions to different challenges. So uh, these thought leaders promote stability, growth, and achievement. Um, that is it for, for today. I would like to thank you for listening to me. Now welcome the questions and answers. Back to you, the host. Thank you so much, Regis, for that great presentation this so we've, uh, we've all heard about thought leadership and uh, she summarizes by saying that uh, a thought leader creates and initiates change. And a thought leader is also very inquisitive and they do a lot of research. So there you have it. If you have any questions, please uh, send them through. Okay. Um, seeing something from Patrick here. Uh, can we also conclude that thought leaders are charismatic, inspirational, intuitive, because they always speak and breathe new adventurous things? Anyway, okay. <clears throat> I think it's just a, a reiteration of what you've just said. But uh, another question came in earlier here. And uh, Regis' question is, what is the value of thought leadership to an organization? Can I respond? Yes, you can. Yes. Um... The value of thought leadership to an organization, I think it is the ending of the the slides, uh, what visionary leaders do. I said that uh, their value is that they can promote behavioral competences amongst the, the employees because uh, they, they, they inspire them. They inspire them, they motivate them, they encourage them because they are after um, adopting their findings from what they have been researching about solving a problem so they promote they promote behavioral competences and uh, i also mentioned that uh, mark said that uh, maxwell inspires him and no wonder they have taken that route of thought leadership so they inspire and uh, they promote the behavioral competences if you have a thought leader in the organization it's very very good for you they inspire others they motivate and of course they create new ideas and appropriate solutions to problems. Thank that. you so much. Thank you. I don't see any other questions. I would like to uh, end the meeting because we are already six minutes beyond our time. Uh, thank you everyone who has attended. Regis, thank you so much for taking your time to come and share your wealth of knowledge with us. We have been very privileged to have you on this call. I would like to wish each and everyone here a good evening 
and we'll see you in our next training. I hope you were able to fill our feedback form. Please fill the form because it will help us to know what areas you'd like uh, training on in the coming series. So we shall see you again. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.